welcome um, everybody to Crane Park on behalf of the Northeast Earth Coalition. We are launching today the Pollinators, New Jersey Pollinator Pathway. This project uh, is beginning in Montclair, but we are the leader at state level for the project and we'll be propagating uh, the, the, the project around all the communities uh, surrounding Montclair, Central Jersey and South Jersey. So far, we have more than 200 uh, certified habitat uh, in Montclair, and hopefully we'll be increasing that number to 300 or 400 more. Um, establishing pollinator-friendly habitat and food sources for bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds, and other pollinators and wildlife. That is the main goal of the pollinator pathway. We are very proud that Montclair is taking the leadership at a statewide level with this project. And so Montclair will be the first pollinator pathway community uh, in New Jersey. Uh, we have the mayor here, um, Sean Spiller. So let's introduce him and welcome him to the um, activity. Well, thank you so much, and it is my pleasure to be here. Uh, and this is really just an exciting piece uh, of what makes Montclair so special. I think we pride ourselves on uh, so many things here in town, one of them being our focus on the environment, focusing on making sure we do every piece that we can. And I can tell you bringing uh, my son out today, he's just excited to see everything happening here, but can feel the energy around what we're doing. And I think that's what this is all about. It's about doing good for the environment, but it's about education. It's about making sure uh, that we're teaching. We're teaching the kids, that next generation, uh, why it's so important to do these things, to care for our environment. Uh, and this is one of those steps. So I'm just excited to be a part of it. I know we've got so many great leaders here in town uh, who've done so much. Uh, we're a focused community uh, when we're talking about green energy, when we're talking about all the ways that we can lead the way, uh, we try and do what we can. So it's great to see everybody come together. You can see from the group that's here, um, it's an exciting time and we're all just happy to come together. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We also have another elected official, Honorable, Honorable Council Member Lori Evans. Thank you so much, Jose, and, and to really all the activists who have been um, the sustainers of sustainability. And uh, this is certainly one of the things that um, distinguishes Montclair. Uh, but I, I want to really emphasize that uh, you don't have to be a lifelong activist of any sort to take really positive, uh, important measures. The backyard project is something that everybody could try and take on. You don't need a lot of space. You just need to know um, how you can plant the right things to really help change the world. And um, you know, everyone should take the steps that they can, and uh, really, I appreciate that we have such dedicated um, community members and people with uh, professional and and just lay knowledge who are who are just out there leading the way and helping us all recognize where we can make a difference. So, thank you so much. Glad to be here with you. We have also with us uh, Lyle Landon from the Environmental Commission. She's the co-chair, and we also have Alaya. Um, uh, here from the Parks and Recreation. Let's introduce first Lai and she will say something. Hi, I'm Lyle Landon. I'm co-chair of the Montclair Environmental Commission and I just want to applaud Jose and all the work he has done here at Crane Park and at other places. He's being very modest. He's not telling you about all of the other establishments that he's done uh, throughout New Jersey. And this is the way that we can take a step forward by doing it on a backyard basis. And then collectively, we've really made a difference. So thank you to Jose and to your team. Uh, we appreciate all that you do and look forward to helping you. Thank you. So, Alia. <laughs> thank you, Greg. Good morning, everybody. It's so wonderful to be here today on this beautiful day. I'm really excited to support Jose and the Northeast Earth Coalition and this amazing project that they are spearheading. Um, Jose has been such a NASA to the environmental community in Montclair and just the community in general. So 
we're really happy to be able to celebrate this in Crane Park, which was once blighted, but something that he and the rest of Friends of Crane Park completely turned around. So thank you again, Jose, for all that you do. And we're really excited to kick off this project today. Thank you, Alia. Thank you very much. And we have uh, more people here. There are Northeast Earth Coalition and Mutual Aid. Uh, let's start with Anne Steyer. She has been a pioneer for pollinators in this part of the, of the town. So, Jose asked me to, um, to speak for a moment about the importance of pollinators, and I have to look at my very favorite breakfast, which I had this morning. It's a piece of toast, and then on the toast I drizzle olive oil, then I spread tomato paste on top of that instead of jam, and then on top of that I sprinkle herbs, which I grow in my yard, thyme and rosemary and oregano, and it is delicious. Just about all of that depends on pollinators. Everything except for the wheat and the bread, which I think is wind pollinated, but all of the herbs, the tomatoes, the olives, all of that are dependent upon pollinators to bring me my breakfast. So by us encouraging pollinators to develop and thrive and multiply in our gardens is extremely important to every mouth about <laughs> that we eat unless we're going to rely on oatmeal and gruel for the rest of our lives. So this project supports that and it's a fabulous project and let's go for it and support it all the way. Thank you. Thank you Anne. We appreciated your feedback and input. Uh, let's now introduce Dr. Rene Baskerville. She's a, a board member of the Northeast Earth Coalition, and she has been also supporting our initiative in this community. Thank you very much, Jose. Um, I'm delighted to be here on this fabulous day, and I'm grateful that I've been able to have the opportunity to work very closely with Jose and the Northeast Earth Coalition for at least about the last three for four years, and I've learned a lot. Uh, when originally we started working in this park just because it was a blighted area that was not uh, receiving the attention that it needed, I had no idea that I would learn so much and get to this point where I'm aware of the, the importance of the pollinators, not just for the breakfast and the things that you just heard about, but the beauty that they bring butterflies that will come to the pollinators and bees and in terms of the environment, all of the benefits that they have. And all over Montclair now, there are gardens that people have taken time and because of Jose and the Northeast Earth Coalition, more and more people are becoming aware of the importance and deciding to put pollinator gardens in their yard. I may be the next one. I'd like to thank you very, very much, Jose, for everything that you've done. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Aaliyah Livingston, the chairperson of the Park and Recreation Department, and um, Marcia Almeida, who has been working tirelessly with this group for a very, very long time, and I've also had an opportunity to work with them. So start looking for additional spaces, and yeah, Montclair is definitely rising. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Bacteria. Thank you very much. Let's introduce now David Wasmuth. He is the uh, chair of the board of directors of the Northeast Earth Coalition, an environmentalist and community activist. Well, good morning, and thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, this, the Pollinator Pathway Project is I think a symbol of what people can do on a community level and individual level to help with the crisis that we face in one of the environmental crises, which is with the collapse of pollinator populations. And if you look at the park right here, if you came here three years ago, it was a very different story. Uh, I live in the neighborhood. I used to pass by frequently, and every time I'd go by, I'd say, why doesn't somebody do something with this park? Somebody has to do something. And finally, a group of us realized that we were somebody and we took responsibility and through the Northeast Earth Coalition, we started planting and if you look at the park now, 
even now, it, we're well into October, we've been through a drought, but if you look at the asters that are blooming, the goldenrod that are blooming today, you'll see they're covered, they're alive, they're moving, they're covered, covered with pollinators. And this is something that you can do in your own home. If you, see, if you don't have a space in your home, you can find a neglected public area, make it your project, and, and let's help the pollinators. Thank you. Red is also a board member of the Northeast Earth Coalition, and he's an icon in this community. Um, everything here is possible because Greg is behind. So they has been a wonderful supporter in this year, especially during the pandemic time with his group, Montclair Mutual Aid. So let's introduce Greg. Oh, wait, my own mic. I'm also the sound man. Um, thank you, Jose. Uh, every Monday at, at 10 a.m., Montclair Mutual Aid, which is a group of, of Montclair residents, area residents that want to support people, especially during COVID season, come out here and come out to the other community gardens. And we pick, ve we pick vegetables or chard or, or kale, and we, we help with the pollinators. And it's been an incredible project, but it's also incredible to see the people in this area whose eyes light up when they see such a great but such a great park in our community, especially when it used to be a blighted park. And I was here in the beginning when there was nothing. So uh, thank you, Jose, and special thanks to our Montclair Mutual Aid members. Uh, Jose has been a real inspiration. Thanks. Thank you, Greg. Um, is, I want to emphasize this. Uh, sometimes you get volunteered for one day or for one opportunity. But during these difficult times, this group, Montclair Mutual Aid, has been coming every Monday for more than 24 weeks, working in this park, working in three community gardens, and delivering food for people to facing food insecurity in this community. It's amazing the work that they have done, and I want to recognize publicly because, like I said before, doing something good one time is great, but doing this regularly during a pandemic is even exceptional. And they produce more than 700 pounds of fresh local food who was donated to the food pantry, Tony's Kitchen. Thank you. So, nevertheless, we have one person who is an icon in this community, uh, the butterfly lady. We crowned her right here many years ago. Trina has been an inspiration for many generations, and she's the author of the book, Hope for the Flower. Uh, Trina. Right now, in the pollinator season, we have something wonderful going on. That's the monarch story. They're on their journey south right now, and according to history, they arrive at the Day of the Dead, which is Halloween, All Saints Day, November 1st. So they leave here and they take about two months, or maybe a little less. They fly the 3,000 miles to Michoacan, Mexico. So I'm emphasizing that, because that's what's going on at the moment. Here we have our beautiful, beautiful monarchs. And here, and here's just a close-up of what goes on down there in those, those, those things. If you want to look at this book later, I decided to take the chance and bring it to a public gathering, because I hardly ever take this book out, because it's so wonderful for me. So next spring, at the end of February, at the beginning of March, they will start what we call the journey north. And they don't get as far as here. What happens is that the ones that fly south are very different than the summer ones that have their ba babies and their eggs up here. It's the 28-day cycle. And so they, the ones that come up here and come into our yards, they mate like the second day. The female lies about 700 to 1,400 eggs, one at a time under milkweed. That's why I grow your milkweed, folks. And then they have a couple of cycles here, and then 
the last cycle, called the Methusiel cycle, you know, Methusiel, the one who lived so long, they live about five to nine months, and they do not mate up here. They use all their reproductive energy to fly south, the ones that are flying south right now. So in the spring, they get off of their porch perch, which you can see here, these wonderful pictures, and they fly north, and they get as far as Texas, but they don't care about walls, you know. So uh, they will get about as far as Texas. As well. So we get their children or their grandchildren or maybe their grandchildren, great-grandchildren up here. I'm never quite sure of that. It's a 28-day cycle, so everything that started in Texas has to take 28 days. So maybe they get to Tennessee, I don't know. Um, but it's a wonderful thing to be part of this. And that's, every other butterfly needs a Montclair, needs a uh, corridor. But the monarchs are special in the world. They're the only insect that migrates like this. And they're 80 to 90% down over the last 10 years. So they're well worth supporting and saving. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be part of this group. Thank you, Trina. We appreciate all you are doing. We would like to invite Peter from Quiet Montclair to explain the project that he is conducting, also the importance of uh, preserving the leaf in our garden. Uh, yeah, my name is Peter, Peter Holm. I live here in Montclair, and thanks, Jose, for the opportunity. Um, I'm part of a group that started recently called Quiet Montclair. We are trying to reduce the use of gas-powered leaf blowers in our community, uh, which run on two-stroke engines that I think most people here probably know are, are highly polluting uh, and problematic both for humans and for animal life and uh, plants. Um, one of the, we're trying to promote a lot of different alternatives to those uh, machines, including battery powered blowers, but especially um, alternative approaches like leaving some of the leaves in your yard and mulching them rather than uh, trying to remove them. For example, they, they are really important for pollinator habitat, for overwintering and other um, sorts of uh, uh, benefits to wildlife and horticulture. So. Um, just thanks again, Jose, for all the work here, and Dave and others. Um, and if people want to check out what we're doing, we're at quietmontclair.org. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate your input. Um, let's close this event with an exhortation to register. Go online, www.neearth.org. It's free. It's really simple. Don't cost you anything, just basic information, three, four questions, and you are done. Um, I also want uh, to acknowledge uh, two persons here. Um, there has been incredible uh, for this community. One is Nancy Tajani. Nancy is a board member of the Northeast Earth Coalition, a dedicated gardener and community activist. And Nancy uh, has been a supporter of monarch butterflies and pollinators for decades. Uh, also, Marcia Almeida, which uh, already was announced by um, Rene. Marcia is also a board member of the coalition, and her passion and work and dedication is amazing. So, we are very proud to have her in the board of directors. Does anyone want to say anything to close this event? This is the opportunity, an open mic for anyone. Thank you.